Let's take a look at how to use proportions to solve some conversion problems. Remember that a proportion is really just two equivalent ratios. For example, if I have one half and two fourths, I can see that those are really equivalent if I take it and use a real life example. Here I have a pizza and I can take one half of my pizza by shading in this side over here. So I take one half of it like this. Now, if I was to split this one side and split it into four pieces, now I have four. I have two fourths. That's the same as having one half. So proportions are really just equivalent ratios. And we're going to use that fact to solve some problems. And remember that when we cross multiply with proportions, so when we cross multiply like this, we multiply one times four, what we get multiplying this way is going to equal what we get when we do this way. So 2 times 2 is also 4, and we can use that to solve our problems. So here we go. Let's take a look at our first problem here. The distance between an elementary school, an elementary school here, put an E there, and a middle school, there's our middle school right here, is 4.05 kilometers. 4.05 kilometers between those two things. Now, anytime we're going to solve a problem, we need to make sure that we know what the question is. So the question is, what is this distance in meters? What is this distance, 4.05, in meters? To solve conversion problems using proportions, we need to ask ourselves three questions. Question number one, what have we got? What does the problem tell us that we have? In this case, we know that we have 4.05 kilometers. The next question we want to ask is, what do we want? What is the problem asking us to give? In this case, it wants the distance in meters. So we have it in kilometers. We want the answer in meters. And then the last question is, how do we get there? What is the ratio that we can use to get from 4.05 kilometers to some number of meters. To do that, we're going to set up our proportion. Now, we know that we've got 4.05 kilometers. What have we got? 4.05 kilometers. We're going to put that on top. We could put it on the bottom. We're going to put it on top just because it's easier to think that way. The next question we asked, what do we want? Well, we want the answer in meters, so we're going to put the unit of meters down here. And since we don't know the number of meters, we're going to use a variable to represent that. So we have 4.05 kilometers for every x meters. Okay? Now, how do we get there? How do we get from kilometers to meters? What we need to finish our proportion is another ratio. Another something that's equal to something else. So in this case, we know that one kilometer is equal to one thousand meters. Now that'll be on the sheet that I handed out to you that has a conversion sheet on it. But you can also look it up on the internet. There's any number of conversions. You might even be able to find something for your cell phone. Let's take a look at it. We know that for every one kilometer there are one thousand meters. We want to make this into a ratio that matches our current problem. So let's say one kilometer over one thousand meters. Notice our kilometers match across the top and our meters match across the bottom. And what we're saying is, if one kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters, then what, how many meters does 4.05 kilometers equal? So one kilometer is 1,000 meters. How many meters is 4.05 kilometers? To solve our problem, we need to cross multiply. We'll cross multiply like this. We'll draw our x. And then we know that 1 times x is just x. Now we need to multiply 4.05 times 1,000. We could punch that into our calculator. That would be fine. But we also know that any time we multiply 4.05 times a power of 10, that we're just going to take our decimal and move it over the number of spaces that we have zeros for. So we have a thousand, we have three zeros, we're just going to move our decimal over one, two, and we'll have to add another zero because we've got a space that's empty. And what we get when we're done is four thousand with our extra zero, fifty. 
4,050 is the result of 4.05 times 1,000. If you don't believe me, you can type it into your calculator to be sure. So x is equal to 4,050. But 4,050 what? We were solving for x to get meters, so we know that it's 4,050 meters. 4.05 kilometers is equal to 4,050 meters. Let's so use the same process to take a look at another problem. What is five and a half pounds converted to ounces? What have we got? That's our first question. Well, we have five and a half pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and write that over here. Five and one half. I could write it as a fraction. I'm going to go ahead and write it as a decimal just because it's, you know, this might as well be one thing as the other. 5.5 pounds. And we want to convert that to ounces. So what do we want? We want ounces. Now, the question we have to ask ourselves is, how do we get there? We've got what we have. We've got what we want. We need to know how we get there. We have a ratio that says one pound is equal to 16 ounces. We know that. We know that one pound is going to equal 16 ounces. Notice that this is a unit rate. One pound is equal to 16 ounces. I can write that like this. 16 ounces is one pound. So it's a unit rate because it has a one in the bottom. We're going to flip it upside down and use it like this so that our pounds match and our ounces match. Once we've got that taken care of, we can solve using cross multiplication because if one pound is equal to 16 ounces, we want to know how many 5.5 pounds is. We multiply and we get one times x, which is just x. And then we multiply 5.5 times 16 ounces. 16. So 5.5 times 16. And that is going to be equal to 88. So we get x equal to 88. And 88 what? It's 88 ounces. Well, there we go. In this problem, we're told that Sally's backpack had a mass of 3 kilograms. She placed five books that each had a mass of one kilogram inside the backpack. What is the weight of the backpack and the books together in grams? What's the first question we're going to ask? The question is, what have we got? So, what have we got? We know that her backpack has a mass of three kilograms. A mass of three kilograms for the backpack. But, that's not all. We also have some other things. We know that she also has five books. Five books, and each one of those has a mass of what? If you look at the problem, it tells us each one has a mass of one kilogram. So, one kilogram here, one kilogram here, one kilogram here, one kilogram here, and one kilogram here. We want to know what was the weight of the backpack and the books together in grams. And we know that we have kilograms here, so three kilograms, and then we have five more kilograms. So what we've got, we have to do a little bit of work to get there. We have to actually add these two together. And what we wind up with is three plus five, which is eight kilograms. That's what we've got. Now what do we want? We, we want that weight in grams. So we don't know the number of grams. We'll put x grams there. And we'll set up our proportion. How many grams are there in a kilogram? Well, we know that there are 1,000 grams in one kilogram. So we'll set up our ratio. One kilogram and 1,000 grams. Notice they match kilograms to kilograms, grams to grams, and then cross multiply. One times x is just x. Eight times 1,000 is, of course, 8,000. We don't need a calculator for that. So what we have, the weight of the backpack and the books together, which was eight kilograms, is equal to 8,000 grams.